KYW News Radio Original Podcasts. This is KYW News Radio In Depth. I'm Matt Leon. Faith in American elections has been trending in the wrong way for a while now, in large part because of Donald Trump's unrelenting lies about fraud in the 2020 election. And a lot of people are running to be in charge of elections who buy into those lies. We recently saw a situation in New Mexico where Republican commissioners originally refused to certify Republican primary election results based not on any evidence, but on unsubstantiated concerns about voting equipment. That situation eventually was addressed and the results certified, but is this just a preview of things to come? What happens if the various election mechanisms in this country start getting tied up in conspiracy theories and intractable beliefs? Dr. Bill Rosenberg will be our guest for this discussion. He is a professor of political science at Drexel University. Without getting too much into the weeds of how elections work, basically votes are counted where they're placed and they just kind of go up a chain of command where they're kind of certified on every level. I know every state's a little different, but that's kind of the basic idea, right? Right. So what happens is the way our government is set up, you know, we're a a federal system, but elections are largely under the preview of state governments. Uh, There is some legal protections that exist, for example, equal protection under the law, under the federal constitution. But uh, largely, states are able to write their own rules about how elections are going to take place. And you're right that people traditionally we think of as going to the polls on Election Day and uh, seeing the ballot in front of them on the machine and clicking off who they want to vote for. And the machine records all the results. And at each polling district, there's always a Democrat and a Republican there to make sure that there's no uh, monkey business taking place. They sum up the scores and then they sent them from the district level up to the, the town or the city, to the county, to the state, and if it's a federal level, to the national government, they're recorded in some way. Although with the federal elections for the president, we have a little bit of a different situation because we have the electoral college. All this has been greatly changed over time, though, and I think it's important for your listeners to understand that one of the most dramatic changes actually happened in 2020 with regards to elections, because we went from either just voting at the precinct level to being able to do mail-in ballots, to be able to do uh, drop boxes, and to do a variety of other mechanisms that was highly challenged by Donald Trump. Uh, And he was raising the issue about how there's so much fraud involved and how are we going to have a free and fair election. And he planted the seed very heavily months before the election that if he didn't win, it was a fraudulent election. Now, it's kind of an awkward thing to, to charge that the election is filled with fraud before the election has even taken place. And I think that's the context that we're seeing many of these challenges taking place presently, particularly at the state levels right now, the New Mexico situation and others, where people simply raise the question of, we don't think that that election was really fair. That's where we're at right now. You mentioned the New Mexico situation. This was a primary recently, a one county that is heavily Republican the I believe it's the county commissioners refuse to certify it. This is not based on they come out and say it's not based on evidence or anything, just on a, a concern or a feeling that the voting machines were corrupt. Now, eventually, the secretary of state in New Mexico, who was a Democrat, flexed some muscle in the courts and they got them to certify, but only on a two to one, still one commissioner. Uh, who I think it should be mentioned is serving time now or about to be sentenced for a role in the Capitol insurrection. But but this, to me, is this just kind of a preview of what we could see, you know, going forward as those seeds have been planted? Well, I think what we're facing now is a lack of reality taking place in politics. And not to single out simply one person, but the The thought immediately comes to mind as you're discussing this with me is Kellyanne Conway. 
So Kellyanne Conway was a special advisor to President Trump, and she would go out after there were problems with press secretary Sean Spicer and others reflecting what the president was thinking. And she started talking about alternative facts. And many people would question, well, what is an alternative fact? And you never got really a clear answer, except that anything that Donald Trump and his minions didn't like was another perspective that ought to be considered very seriously. Rudy Giuliani in the 2020 election and post made a statement that went something like, we've got lots of theories, we just don't have the evidence. So what happens is it's really easy to sort of raise the specter of something not being legitimate or appropriate, but it's another to actually find true evidence that something was corrupt or didn't take place. Now, one of the confusing aspects of this is that within the 50 states, we have several different mechanisms in place to be able to hold elections. Again, as I said, there are drop boxes, there's early voting, there's electronic machines, there's paper ballots, all of these things take place. And they require sort of a big confluence of taking all the materials regarding an election and boiling it down into a winner and a loser. And when we do that, it makes it very easy to say, well, perhaps something isn't quite right here. But what we have to also realize is that historically, these types of election shenanigans are not necessarily really new. If we go back to 1960 with the presidential election there, there are a lot of people that have allegations that John F. Kennedy's campaign stole the election by stuffing ballot boxes in West Virginia and also in Illinois. It wasn't such a big story at the time because there was such great faith in the American electoral system. But historians and social scientists that have examined this really raise serious questions, and they're not politically motivated by being Republicans or Democrats. It's just like, what happened? I'd also say that if you think about more recent history, we can go take a look at the Bush-Gore election in 2000. It ends up that that election was very close in Florida. It was a contested election. It was contested by Democrats at the time because they felt that George Bush and his campaign was able to steal the election because Florida put Bush over the electoral count that he needed of 270 electoral college votes. We also have to recognize that at the time, the governor of the state was his brother, Jeb Bush, and the secretary of state was also a Republican. So there was this balancing of the two parties in the state legislature and the court systems, and eventually the Supreme Court ruled and said, Bush won. It was an interesting situation because what we found was this was a a form of judicial activism. They were getting involved in an election and changing basically potentially the outcome. They were not letting it get resolved at the state level. They sort of laid down by decree who was going to be the winner. So I think what we have to realize is that this is a very, very complex situation, very tenuous. And I think we have to be prepared to be able to have enough strength in our our sense of democracy for us to have free, fair, and open elections. Now, what we're seeing in the United States is our own elected officials challenging the legitimacy of our own elections. And this is a major departure from what we've seen historically. And I think we have to be very much concerned of what does this mean. To that point, the situation in New Mexico, there was a checks and balance between the two-party group that wouldn't certify was all Republican, Democratic Secretary of State. There are several states Specifically, this is something we're seeing on the Republican side that are kind of Republican up and down. Let's say one of these states, a county level, says we're not going to certify based on gut feeling or we don't think there's any way that this candidate could have won. And if there isn't pressure above them to do the proper thing, 
Does this thing just kind of grind to a halt? Do we just get lost in courtroom fights? What happens? Your sense of frustration is very much on the minds of people that are concerned about democracy. I think what we have to realize is that while I don't want to be considered over the edge, this is kind of an example about what happened in Nazi Germany in the 1930s. I mean, Hitler, by the time he got to be in control of the whole governmental structure, was granted through legal processes the right to assume certain powers. And it was a slow evolutionary process over a couple of years that gave him that power. What we're seeing right now in the United States is sort of, some might claim sort of this fascist almost movement towards denying democracy and not wanting to count everyone's vote in a free and fair way. Now, we have to be careful that we don't get to be too extremist in our points of view. For example, in our system of law, for example, we have something called automatic recounts. So if the election is very close in Pennsylvania, it's a half of 1%, there's an automatic recount and no candidate has to request it. It just happens automatically. But it ends up that when we look at election recounts, there's multiple ways in which this does it. They could read all of the forms through the same machines again and make sure they came up with the same count. They could hand count them. They could do a statistical analysis of a sample. So there's all different means by which you can do recounts. So we have automatic recounts and we have recounts that happen because someone is challenging the election, perhaps beyond the 0.05 level. So we have several different mechanisms in place. But at the end of the day, I think Americans have to feel comfortable that there's a legitimate process in place that ensures that we have democracy. And what happens is many people that are listening have had the, heard the term the big lie. This was something that was promoted by Donald Trump in the sense that he didn't lose, he actually won the election. And for those of you that are listening to the hearings that are taking place on the January 6th insurrection, we've been hearing in recent days about how that simply was a falsehood that was being promoted by Donald Trump because his own advisors said, including Attorney General Barr, that the election was fair and the counts were accurate. The Trump campaign put out over 60 court challenges about the election and the election counts, and he lost every one of them. But it didn't, it didn't dismay him. It didn't stop him from making the speeches on January 6th. And his supporters continued to buy into this. Donald Trump is also presently endorsing people that are going to be the heads of the election accounts all across the country. He is endorsing these people. So can you imagine having a secretary of state who doesn't believe that the election was conducted properly, be the official arbiter of an election that's upcoming? How are we going to control the situation? Well, you can hope that our system of checks and balances would step in. Okay, that if something was really egregious, somebody would file suit in court and the court would step in in some way like they did in 2000 with the Bush Gore campaign and try and resolve it. The problem, though, that we're facing right now, I believe, is that ultimately the Supreme Court of the United States is heavily balanced towards conservatives. Three of the nine justices were appointed by Donald Trump. And it's unlikely that they are going to rule against conservatives in some of their quests. This is why we're on such a dangerous trajectory right now, because our whole system of governance is being sort of questioned, and particularly the legitimacy of democracy. We need to take a break. We will continue our conversation with Dr. Bill Rosenberg right after this. This is KYW News Radio in depth. Back on KYW News Radio In-Depth, continuing our chat with Dr. Bill Rosenberg. You kind of touched earlier that you're not dealing with reality. And if someone just believes that something isn't 
true or c- couldn't have happened that way, and they are in a position of power, I don't know how you address that. Because I can't, I mean, we're going to hit a point, and I know all the focus is on the presidential election, but I could see a situation where there's a congressional seat or a Senate seat, and I'm talking in 2022, and some block of people in power just refuse to certify. And I, what do we do? You know, there's a lot of politics that's going on right now. I don't know that a lot of citizens are paying as close attention to it as they probably should. You know, these January 6 hearings highlighted the the problems for campaign workers. You know, these the, these two women from Atlanta were targeted directly by the president of the United States saying that they were doing corrupt behavior and they felt a fear for their lives. They couldn't go out and now both of them no longer work as election officials or election counters. We also have the heroic situation of many Republicans, and I, and I think many Republicans should get credit for standing up to Donald Trump and his campaign staffs. Even in Philadelphia, we have Al Schmidt, who testified recently about his role in the election in 2020, in which he said basically he was getting heavy pressure by the Trump people to say that the election was fraudulent. He refused to do it because he knew that it was not, okay? And as a result, he faced enormous pressures and threats to himself and his family. I keep coming kind of back to this, that I just feel like we're we're headed to an unprecedented place where there's going to be an intractable group that just refuses to sign off on something and deadlines are going to pass and they don't care. People are going to need to be seated and... It's eventually going to come to a head somewhere. It's just a matter of where and what the context is of it. I think you make an excellent point. And again, I keep going back a little bit to the national elections. But with the presidency, there's what's called Safe Harbor Day, which happens around December 12th, where all the elections across the country have to be certified by the various states. And then they have their electoral college vote in each of the states in late December. And then they send their votes to Washington via mail. Uh, And on January 6th, the vice president and Congress opens them up. Well, the real challenge was, were they going to make the safe harbor date of December 12th? And then we found after that, he had already made those deadlines that particularly, I would say, Republican activists tried to disrupt both through protests, through the insurrection, but also through government action the non-certification or non-counting of certain states' delegations. The January 6th commission uh, is unraveling sort of the activities of Senator Ron Johnson from Wisconsin, who had his staff forward an envelope with alternative slates of electors 36 minutes before the vice president was to convene the actual counting of the electoral college ballots. So you can't get much closer than that, they're really fouling up the election. And what happens in those types of situations, that's why they have the safe harbor day, is you wanna have everything resolved as close to the actual ballot count as it can be, and then filter those results up to whatever is gonna be either the city, the county, the state, or the national government. If people are able to disrupt that, and able to find any little crack or crevice, there's going to be problems because then you can't have your officials taking office. And just to give you a little bit of a statistic, it ends up that in statewide recounts from 2000 to 2019 in the United States, races were only reversed three times, according to fair vote, three times in almost 20 years. And, you know, some of those votes you could win by one vote. Elections are our greatest gift about choosing who our political leaders are going to be. And if that's not upheld in a way, then it really calls into question anything that happens as a result of their activities as elected officials. You know, it's kind of ironic that I have not seen, and I may be wrong, but I have not seen one Republican who challenged the 2020 election 
with the big lie question, challenging their own election. Every one of those House members was elected. Every Republican was elected in the same election as Donald Trump was defeated. None of them challenged their victory in 2020, but they challenged Joe Biden's. So there's a disconnect going on. And, and I think that we have to be very careful that we don't get fatigued with this kind of question. We also have to be very careful that when we think about the January 6th hearings that are going on, who are the people watching it? Probably mostly Democrats or some independents. The Republicans in the United States are generally not watching this. I remember on the first night watching Tucker Carlson saying, we're not going to put on the January 6th hearings. I'm going to tell you the straight dope about what actually happened. And he went on for two hours. So his supporters, the people that support Donald Trump and the big lie, were not going to be impacted at all by those hearings because they weren't even watching them. So we have such a polarized country that there are different versions of reality out there. And quite frankly, I'm not sure how we draw this back to sort of a level of normalcy. That's it for this episode of KYW News Radio in depth. You can listen to the podcast free anytime on the Odyssey app, and you can find it wherever you listen to your favorite shows. I'm Matt Leon, and we'll have another episode out soon. <laughs>